Ten. Travel. Listening activity number one. In the booking office at Victoria Station. You are going to hear a conversation between a customer and a clerk in a booking office. Listen to the conversation and fill in the form. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Good afternoon. I'd like two tickets to Cambridge, please. Uh, singles or returns? Oh, returns, please. Day or standard? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Could you say that again, please? Are you coming back today? Because if so, you want day returns. They are cheaper. Oh, yes. Two day returns, please. It's 30 pounds altogether. Here is 40 pounds. Thanks. Uh, here's your change. Have a good day. Next, please. All right. It's done. But don't let's waste the afternoon. Where could we go next, Mary? I suggest we go to the West End to do some shopping. That's a good idea. We can go by tube, can't we? And there are many good shops there to look around. And dress shops. Yes, I know you always want to go there. Listening activity number two. At the reception desk in a hotel. You are going to hear a conversation between a customer and a receptionist in a hotel. Listen to the conversation and fill in the missing information in the form. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Tom Smith. I believe you have a room reserved for me. Just a moment, Mr. Smith. Let me see. Smith. Yes, yes, Mr. Smith. You booked a double room two days ago. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Mr. Smith, your room number is 401 on the fourth floor. Would you fill in this form, please? Certainly. How long do you intend to stay in the hotel, Mr. Smith? Well, let me see. Today is Friday, and I'm probably going to leave on next Friday morning. On Friday morning, so you will stay here about a week? Yes, that's right. Oh, excuse me. Where shall I put my passport number? Just at the bottom. That's right. Thank you. Oh, where do I have my breakfast? On the second floor. Here is your key, and take your key with you when you have meals. Thank you. Uh, would you please wake me up at ten past eight tomorrow morning, please? Ten past eight? Certainly. Porter, please take Mr. Smith's suitcase to his room. Mr. Smith, please follow him. Thank you. You're welcome. Listening activity number three. New security rules for hand luggage. You are going to hear an announcement at an airport. Listen to the announcement, choose the correct answer, and then complete the statements. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to protect passengers against the new danger posed by liquid explosives, the European Union has issued new security provisions. The new regulations will apply to all airports within the EU. Please take note of these new security regulations for hand luggage and take them into account when planning your journey. It is still possible to pack liquids in your hold luggage. The new rules apply only to hand luggage. Here are the new security rules for hand luggage. 1. On all flights originating in the European Union, EU, liquids may only be taken on board in small quantities, including domestic flights. All containers with a maximum capacity of 100 milliliters must be packed in a transparent, resealable one-liter plastic bag. 
This includes perfumes, shampoos, lotions, creams, toothpaste, drinks, etc. 2. Only one such bag is permitted per passenger, and the bag must be completely sealed. 3. Medicines and special food, for example, baby food, required during the flight, do not need to be carried in the plastic bag. These items have to be presented at the security check too. 4. Duty-free items, bought at airports within the European Union or on board an EU airline, may be carried in a sealed bag, accompanied by a receipt of purchase dated the same day. The bag is sealed at the point of purchase. Listening activity number four. An exciting journey. You are going to hear a story about an exciting journey. Listen to the story, complete the statements, and then answer the questions. It was a long journey. John and Mary had a very nice meal, and afterwards they went to sleep. They were still sleeping when the plane reached London. Wake up, John and Mary, said Mrs. Goodman. We're here. John and Mary rubbed their eyes sleepily and looked down. There was London beneath them. They could see the River Thames. The plane landed with a little bump, and after a while Mrs. Goodman and her children went into the airport. A lady, Mrs. Goodman's younger sister Jenny, was waiting for them. Hello, Janet, and hi, John and Mary, the lady said to the children. I have been working in London for five years, so I know it very well. I'm going to show you some interesting places, but first we will go to your hotel. They all walked outside the airport and got into a taxi. Soon they were driving along a busy street that went into London. All the time they were in the taxi, Jenny was telling them about the things they would see. The next day, after a good night's sleep, Jenny took Mrs. Goodman and her children to see the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives, and to the Houses of Parliament. The next day, they went to Tower Bridge and the Tower of London. Every day they went to see something different. John and Mary were very happy. They said they would have a lot to tell their classmates when they got home. Listening activity number five. The Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square. You are going to hear a conversation between two friends. Listen to the conversation, complete the statements, and then answer the questions. Now let's go to Trafalgar Square to look at the big beautiful Christmas tree. Is it special? Yes. Every year this particular Christmas tree is chosen and sent to London from Norway. Why from Norway? During the Second World War, the Norwegian royal family had to escape the country as the German occupation of Europe advanced. They came here to Britain and were sheltered here in exile for five years. During that time, the Norwegian resistance would send a Christmas tree every year in secret to their exiled king to remind him of his homeland. So, the Norwegian royal family had to escape the country as the German occupation of Europe advanced? Yes, that is right. Of course, at the end of the war, they returned home. And every year, since 1947, the Norwegian government has sent a Christmas tree to London in gratitude 
for Britain's support for Norway during World War II. Anything special about this Christmas tree? Yes. This Christmas tree in Trafalgar Square is over 20 meters high and decorated with 500 energy efficient light bulbs and a simple white star on the top. It sounds great. You can also see different groups of carol singers from the country are waiting to take to the stage. Carol singers? Yes. These carol singers will be here every day at Trafalgar Square from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. between the 10th to the 23rd of December. So, if you're in the area, why not come have a look and listen to the carol singers? That's a good idea. Let's go and see this special Christmas tree. All right, let's go. Listening activity number six. Where shall we go? You are going to hear a conversation between two friends. Listen to the conversation and choose the correct answer. Well, Steve, what shall we do this weekend? School starts Monday. Mary, what do you want to do? How about going to Scotland? Scotland? You are mad. This may be a small country by some standards, but we can't go all the way just for a weekend. Oh, all right. It was a joke. But let's get out of London. I need some fresh air. I agree. Good idea. How about Cambridge? There's a lot to see there. Cambridge is a famous university, and it was established in the 13th century. There are many royal connections with the university. For example, King's College, with its beautiful chapel, was founded by Henry VI in 1446, and his wife, Margaret of Anjou, founded Queen's College in 1448. And Trinity College was founded by Henry VIII in 1546. All right. You seem to have done a lot of research on it already. Cambridge is one of the universities I'd like to visit. I'd like to hire a punt, a flat-bottom boat, and take a slow trip on the River Cam. That sounds interesting. I can't wait. Let's find out how to get there. Here is a coach guide. Let me see. Oh, yes. To get the best views of Cambridge, take a one-day trip on the National Express at Victoria Coach Station. A ticket is £12.50. It's not too expensive. How about the time? The early one departs at 9 o'clock and returns at 5.30. That's fine. We can leave on Saturday morning and be back in the afternoon. We'll have one day to have a rest. It sounds good. Let's go and get the tickets. Listening activity number seven. Sightseeing with London coaches. You are going to hear a talk about sightseeing in London. Listen to the talk, complete the statements, and then answer the questions. London is one of the world's greatest and most beautiful cities. What is the best way to acquaint yourself with the city. London coaches can guide you through the city. London coaches offer visitors a variety of sightseeing tours. Let us introduce you to all the famous sights atop a traditional red London bus. The original London Transport Sightseeing Tour, operated by London coaches, departs every day except Christmas Day from four central London points at Haymarket, outside the Design Centre, Victoria Street, Speaker's Corner, Hyde Park, and Baker Street. There are regular departures every day between 10 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon. London coaches can take you to most interesting places in London such as Westminster Abbey, St. Paul's Cathedral, Tower of London, 
Trafalgar Square, and some famous museums and art galleries. There is a commentary on all sightseeing tours. It's in English or French. Visitors can explore London with a professional guide if they choose London coaches. Tickets can be purchased at the departure points or in advance at favourable discounts from London Transport and London Tourist Board Information Centres. Discounted combined tickets to Madame Tussauds, the Waxworks Museum, and London Zoo can also be purchased giving you direct entry without the need to queue. We also offer a number of different sightseeing tours. We call them Days Out of London to allow you to see some of the great sights out from London on a day's trip, such as a tour to Windsor Castle, the largest and oldest inhabited castle in Europe, and a royal residence since the 12th century. A tour to Stonehenge, the awe-inspiring megalithic structure which dates back 3,500 years. Its great stones hold the secrets of its mysterious past. Please telephone us if you need any more information. Listening activity number eight. A tour of London. You are going to hear a talk about a tour of London. Now listen to the talk and fill in the missing information in the table. Good morning, everyone. I'm Susan Paula, your guide. Welcome to London. Now, here is your brief two-day tour around London. This morning, you will visit Westminster Abbey, the place of coronations and royal burial for a thousand years. And then you'll have a tour inside St. Paul's Cathedral with its soaring dome, one of the largest in the world. If you're feeling energetic to climb the 533 steps to the very top of the dome, you will be rewarded with incredible views of London. At about 11, you'll go to Buckingham Palace to see the changing of the guard. This afternoon, you will visit the Tower of London and see the largest diamond in the world, King Henry VIII's armour, and hear tales of ghosts. This evening, you will go to have dinner in Chinatown and then go to a concert nearby. Tomorrow morning, you will visit the National Gallery and the British Museum and Madame Tussauds, the world-famous Wax Works exhibition. In the afternoon, you will go to the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew, one of the world's most important botanical gardens, and surely the most beautiful one, containing some 9,000 trees, stunning bluebell woods, and a ten-story Chinese pagoda. And in the evening, your dinner will be at the renowned Glass House, a French restaurant. After dinner, you will have a free evening, so you can go to some local pubs. It's possible for you to find a really friendly atmosphere and enjoy some local music there. This tour will give you a good overview of London, seeing all the major sites for photo stops. Next morning, at 10.30, you will leave the hotel and fly back to Edinburgh. I hope you'll enjoy the two-day tour. Thank you. Listening activity number nine. At the hotel front desk. You are going to hear a conversation between a desk clerk and Mr. Robinson. Listen to the conversation, fill in the missing information in the table, and then indicate whether the statements are true or false. 
Mr. Robinson rushed up to the front desk, and he looks worried and a bit upset. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? Have you seen a black leather briefcase? I left it here about ten minutes ago. No, sir. I'm afraid I haven't seen it, and nobody has turned anything in. Are you sure you left it here? Of course, I'm sure. I put it right here on the desk while I was picking up my key. You must have seen it. I'm sorry, sir. Have you looked in your room? Yes, I have. Well, we'll try to find it for you.、Uh, in the meantime, I'll fill out a lost and found report and take some details.、Uh, tell me what it looks like first of all. Well, it's a black leather one, an ordinary heavy box type. How does it close? It's got a buckle at the front and is locked. Any distinguishing features? Yes, at the bottom in the right-hand corner there is a scratch. It's quite bad and big. Right, got that. So, what did you have inside the briefcase? Well, all my documents from my company, including two contracts. Luckily, I haven't lost them completely, as there are some in my computer. But I'm still worried about the contracts because I'm going to meet my clients tomorrow. Okay, take it easy. What else is in your briefcase? I have my purse in my pocket, so I didn't lose that. But there are also my pens and some magazines I am planning to read while I'm waiting for the plane. Right, I've got all that.、Uh, by the way, could you tell me your name and the room number? Yes, of course. I'm David Robinson in room two zero three four. All right, Mr. Robinson. We'll let you know as soon as we find it. Thank you very much. Listening activity number ten: A tour of Westminster Abbey. You are going to hear a talk about a tour of Westminster Abbey. Listen to the talk, complete the statements, and then answer the questions. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Paul, and I'll be your guide today on the tour. How are we all doing? Great. Okay. Now, at any time, if you have questions, feel free. Okay. This is our first stop today, Westminster Abbey, London's architectural masterpiece. Now we will have an hour and a half here. So you will have enough time to walk around, and get an idea of what a great place it is. First, let me give you a very brief introduction to Westminster Abbey. The original name was the Collegiate Church of Saint Peter, and then later known as Westminster Abbey. It was originally designed to be a church and cemetery, with countless memorials. And is known as an architectural masterpiece that was built in the 15th century. It has been used for great events such as coronations and other royal parties and events. The church is under the supervision of the crown, and not the diocese, which is highly unusual for a church. You may want to visit the tomb of the unknown soldier. Other royal tombs, shrines, and poets' corner. Some very famous people are buried here, such as Winston Churchill, Charles Dickens, Laurence Olivier, Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, and Jane Austen. It was an honour to be buried here. Only aristocrats, generals, royalty, scientists, and other dignitaries were buried here. Over three thousand people. Have been buried or memorialized here. Just inside the main door is the tomb of the unknown soldier from World War One. It is the only gravestone there that cannot be stepped on. The design of the church is Gothic in nature, similar to the design of a cathedral. Most kings and queens of England are buried here. There are enormous vaulted ceilings 
and beautiful artistic grandeur throughout. The support arches are not visible, but are there enclosed within the roof. There are beautiful works of art housed here, such as a portrait of Richard II, which was painted in the 1300s. From the south view of the abbey, you can see the rose window with a rare medieval sculpture. In the 12th century, the abbey was doing very well and housed over 60 monks and 200 others who assisted in running the Benedictine monastery. It was one of the wealthiest churches in England. Now you can walk around, and I will meet you at the front gate at 3.30, and then we will go to London's famous department store, Harrods. Thank you. Listening activity number 11. Camping. You are going to hear a conversation between two friends. Listen to the conversation, complete the statements, and then indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Hello, Tom. What are you going to do during this semester break? I haven't got any plans yet. I'm reading the brochure from the travel agency to find something I could do. How about you, Jane? I'm going camping in the Grand Canyon with some friends. Do you like camping, Tom? Sure. When I was a kid, we used to go camping in California. Once we went to Yosemite, a national park in California. How did you like it? I was a little disappointed. Really? How come? I've been there and I really liked it. I guess because I was expecting clean and quiet woods, and it turned out to be very crowded with people, and it was very dirty. There was garbage everywhere you looked. Gee, that is too bad. It didn't used to be like that. Next time you should try some other places where it's less crowded than Yosemite. Yeah, maybe I can do that sometimes. I'd like to go back to California. It is really a beautiful state. Why don't you join me and my friends on the camping trip this summer break? Well, I don't know, really. Would your friends mind? No, of course not. They'd be happy to have you along. We are going to the Grand Canyon. Have you been there yet? No, I haven't. I know it's a beautiful place, and I always wanted to visit it. Good. You can join my team this time. Okay. So what equipment do we need to bring with us? Do we have to carry all our foods for a few days? No, we've organized for the food to go down with a van, so we don't need to carry too much. We've borrowed a van from the students' union, in which there are a fridge and all the cooking facilities, so we needn't bother with that. But you'll need to bring a sleeping bag and a backpack. Yeah, I have all these. And what type of clothes should I bring? You need good hiking boots and strong socks. You know we'll hike to the bottom of the canyon. I think you need a warm sweater or a jacket for the evenings. Do we need to book anything, like the hotel maybe? Yes, we've already booked beds in the youth hostel. We've booked six beds, and so far we've only got five people, so it's fine for you to come along. Well done. It sounds like a really interesting trip. I'm looking forward to the camping trip. Here's the schedule. Thanks. See you soon. See you. Have a nice day. Listening activity number 12. A trip to Egypt. You are going to hear a conversation between two friends about a trip to Egypt. Listen to the conversation, complete the statements, and then indicate whether the statements are true or false. Hi, Tony. I'm pleased to see you back. How was the trip to Egypt? Hi, Sarah. It was wonderful. Where did you go? I was told you joined the Camel Dive Club. Yes, we went to the Red Sea in Egypt. You know, it is like a different planet. 
its underwater gardens and coral reefs are spectacular and have helped to make it the world's most popular diving resort. Wait a moment. You went to the Red Sea? Please tell me more about it. The Red Sea is so named because of the deep red cliffs and rocks of the surrounding desert. Taking the plunge is like entering your very own aquarium. There are more than 40 miles of reefs, as well as Ras Mohammed National Marine Park, one of Egypt's greatest national treasures. Sounds interesting. So you must have seen some spectacular things there. Yes, that's right. You know, the unspoiled corals, spectacular scenery, and psychedelic fish of the Red Sea in Egypt are a draw for thousands of divers every year. Where did you stay? How was your accommodation there? It was the best hotel I have ever been to. I stayed at the stunning five-star Grand Rotana Resort and Spa in quiet Sharks Bay. It is set in 31 hectares of tropical park with 2,000 palms and has its own private beach with large terraces stretching down to the sea. Well, it sounds like a fantastic place. Yes, it's very comfortable. Tony, was it your first time to dive? Yes. Tell me about your experience. Were you afraid when you went down? A little bit at first, and very nervous, too. On my first morning, three other novices and I joined a small group with some certified divers. When we anchored just off Jackson Reef, I tried to conquer my fears. I started putting on fins, goggles, and a snorkel, and I cautiously peered over the back of the boat. Following a detailed safety briefing, a six-kilogram lead-weight belt was attached to me, and instructor Vicky placed an air tank on my back. Before I knew it, we were under the water. How did you feel when you were under the water? What did you see there? At first I was anxious to return to the surface, but I persevered and soon began to enjoy the experience. Vicky helped me to concentrate on regulating my breathing, and suddenly we were 20 feet under the sea. I was so attracted by underwater sights, and I felt proud to have finally plucked up the courage to take the plunge. Well, would you like to go there again next holiday? Yes, definitely. Would you like to go there with me? Maybe. But I don't really know if I would like to see the underwater gardens.